They profess to know God, but through their actions deny Him. Titus 1.16, that's one that I've just got imprinted on my heart lately because the lines between understanding who God is and truly following Him and just creating a God in our own minds that has been uh, seduced and conditioned by the powers of this world are two different things. You know, between the Olympics and the Marvel movies, especially uh, this latest one with Deadpool and Wolverine, I, I, I could tell from the trailers, just from some of the things that were said, Marvel, Jesus, and this and that, and now that I've been hearing testimonials from other people that watched it that had to get up and leave after 10, 15 minutes because it was so offensive to Christians, and it's like, it's an easy target to, you know, make fun and blaspheme Christ and, and Christianity. But there's a reason for that. There's a reason that the truth is attacked so viciously because the authorities, the powers that be in this world know that the truth really does set you free. All of the bondage we are under, physical and spiritual, there is a truth and truth by its very nature is exclusive, but they have blurred the lines of truth so radically that people can't put their trust in anything there's just an indifference to even wanting to believe in truth. They don't only attack certain things that are true, but they attack the foundation that have people questioning whether truth even exists. And when you look at what's going on, the Algerian boxer who many were saying was transgender, and now, it, now they're saying, no, she was born a female, but uh, some sort of rare condition that gave her inflated testosterone and an XY chromosome. None of it makes sense, but she ended up just winning the gold medal. And so, you know, the eye test looks like a male. But obviously, there's a lot of females that look male, and there's a lot of males that look female. So you can't go by appearance, obviously. We know that, but that's what the science is supposed to be for. That's what biology is supposed to be for. That's why God gave us a fingerprints internally that is our DNA and the chromosomes and all that represent who we are and you know the way that they've so successfully had people arguing I'm just seeing major articles and big publications USA Today we know they're all controlled it's all a product of the prince and power of the air controlling the airwaves controlling the flow of information how it's distributed whether it's vocally through um, you know, a visual source, a medium, or, or a newspaper. You know, the written word is just as powerful when people can put eyes to paper and read the word. And there's, a, there's just an unspoken credibility when something's published that, oh, there must be truth to this because people are being so turned away from the word. I've heard from friends that were watching the Marvel movie, the Deadpool and Wolverine, and the people laughing at mocking Jesus or saying F Jesus it's so blasphemous but it's so heartbreaking because the young minds are being conditioned to doubt any kind of truth it's all based on how they feel and their feelings are being manipulated 24 7 with a lot of misinformation and disinformation and yet there's so much gaslighting and projection from the side that is promoting all of these radical ideologies that are anti-Christ that turn us away from our creator that they are providing the disinformation and misinformation and yet they're projecting that disinformation onto those who try to expose evil and speak truth but when they continually either undermine the truth of who Jesus is or belittle him or take away his divinity by saying he was just a man and a good teacher so you can follow him if you want but there's no eternal or spiritual aspect to it they've done all they needed to do because they've created doubt they've created indifference to our need for a savior to be spared from the eternal destruction we are all inviting when we applaud these ideologies like i, I love i still loved rooting for the olympics for like sydney mclaughlin i saw her 
you could see her whisper after she sh she won gold. She said, thank you, God. And then in her interview later on that night, she's like, when asked about what gives her the motivation and the, the will to do the, to have such great accomplishments, she said, honestly, it's my faith. It's my faith in the Lord and that he put me here for a reason, not to glorify myself, but to glorify him when I have success. And it was so, it was so refreshing to hear that rather than the pomp and circumstance and the, uh, you know, all of the, the hubris and pride and egos of American basketball and so many of the other Noah Lyles, like he ends up coming in third, but he's being applauded as a hero because he says he had COVID. Having COVID didn't slow down his ego or pride or bravado or all the pomp and circumstance into his introduction. And it's like, he seems like an affable young guy who just kind of thinks like he's playing the role and being the face to try to bring hype to the sport. And I get that, but at some point, you know, he, he talks about doing all this for God and God gave him a sign that he was going to do this and that. And it's like, I want to believe that, but there's so many people who are so compromised because they got one foot in the world and one foot with God, but they don't realize that God is going to spit out anybody who's lukewarm. You read the book of Revelation, it'll give you wake up a wake up call as to what's expected of the true believer in these times. We're not to glorify ourselves and constantly be boastful and prideful. Like that commercial I talked about the other day, the winning isn't for everyone by Nike that boasts LeBron James, who's going viral for belittling an opponent from Serbia yesterday. And then basically putting his arm down to the ground and saying, you can't guard me, you're too small. And it's just that type of stuff is so celebrated. And it's just so boastful and proud and promotes all the wrong things not the fruit of the spirit and we have all these kids emulating him emulating the deadpools and wolverines of the world and just mocking christ not being a good reflection of him not giving glory to him because when you give glory to him by being humble and being selfless that draws other people to him you know you may draw some fan or adoration in this world for boasting of yourself but you're not, you're not scoring any rewards in heaven, regardless of what your words may verbally give out. A lot of people say they love God, but again, unless it shows up in the fruit, it's meaningless. And words are just uttered in vain. Faith without works is dead. So, you know, again, they say they, they say they love me. They say they, they say they know God, but their works prove otherwise. So just a little vent session and something to be aware of. All of these agendas were so colluded in the Olympics, but there will be some, hopefully, platforms given the people who truly are trying to honor him. Those platforms won't stay around long on the mainstream stage if they are not willing to compromise. But for those that are, that are truly listening and paying attention, um, there is some good harvest to come from you know, what the enemy tries to do, God uses for good. The enemy's constantly trying to pervert good, but God uses evil for good. So we know who has victory in the end. Uh, so praise God for that. Praise God for anybody who's hearing this and is seeing through some of the schemes that the enemy is using to undermine people's faith and to have people not willing to even read the Word of God to step into a relationship with Jesus because once people do that once they get rid of their pride and ego and they humbly submit to looking for the lord he will reveal himself and there's no greater sense of peace or joy than when you are communing with the one who created you when the word became flesh in the form of jesus christ to take on all of our sin so i pray this finds you well seek jesus today god bless you we'll see you tomorrow